spoiler. No, not spoiler. Um, which one? What is she? The the teleporter. The fuck is her name? What? This is straight up Barbara Gordon. That's not Barbara Gordon. That's that's what's her. That's the uh, someone misfit. Yes, that's misfit. What? You're just, that's that's the misfit costume. This is Batgirl. Well, she wanted to be Batgirl, but Bat. See the Bat. Yeah, and she was. Yeah, she, see, people in chat don't know who I'm talking about here. It was from Birds of Prey, and she showed up, and she was bothering Barbara because she wanted to be Batgirl. It turns out she was a metahuman, and she could teleport and shit. And she was dressed like that. You just, just seriously, I'm not making this shit up. It was a thing. It totally was a thing. So you're looking at me like I'm fucking with you. I'm not fucking with you. That girl. <laughs> That's what she said, too. That's exactly no, making me angry. I'm not. I'm ter- I'm ter- totally telling you this is a thing that was in DC Comics. And she was awesome, too. Misfit was awesome. Well, I'm supposed to be back. OK, well, that's and that's exactly what Misfit would say. Stop doing that. I worked really hard to on the mask. On. Well, it looks it's going to take me nice. three hours to wash off. Uh, it looks very nice because I actually got this. For the Comic Con party last year at Times Scare that I didn't get to go to because my car exploded. And like, I had a mask. Because that's a the, thing that happens a lot. I had a like actual mask, but I have no idea what happened to it. I have spent the evening tearing my apartment apart trying to find it, and then just decided screw it, break out tons of black eyeliner and go to town. How many how many nights in the cam have we used that exact same mentality? Screw it, draw it on with black pencil. So this is about 14 tons of black eyeliner and cream eyeshadow and some silver eyeshadow for the shading. And it's going to take me forever to scrub it all off my face. All for you, people. The shit she goes through. And all for you to tell me. That I'm some other chick that's not Batgirl. But she's awesome, though. You need to. You're gonna. I'll show you the wiki after the show because she's really cool. And someone else in the channel is like, "Oh, it's Alicia Silverstone, Batgirl." Fuck you! <laughs> Absolutely not. See, I didn't. I didn't do a costume tonight. I'm feeling a little under the weather. So, Commissioner Gordon's daughter, not Alfred's niece. I was. I was feeling kind of sick, so I didn't do a costume tonight. Also, really, really hungry for some reason. Really, really hungry for raw meat. Kinda. You're close. I mm. can't quite tell what it is I want, though. But anyway, they're telling me I need a wheelchair. You know, she needs a wheelchair. That's Oracle. When she has Before the wheel, she was Oracle. Right. She was legit fucking right. Batgirl. She was Batgirl. Then the killing joke may or may not have happened in continuity, and then she was Oracle. That's how, and she got the wheelchair. And- so, no, I do not need a wheelchair because I'm not Oracle. I am Batgirl. Right. If I was here on a little V-neck top in my glasses, I would need a wheelchair. <laughs> we are such incredible geeks. So we've got uh, our we've got uh, what the fuck is wrong with you first and then something a little special for you kids at home after. But uh, let's let's get started. We definitely we have got some amazingly. We've already got a bit of a Halloween theme going for tonight's. What the fuck is wrong with you? Can you believe oh, good. it? Oh, don't don't say oh, it's not oh good. It's not an oh good. It's not good. Do I need to fight crime? No, you need to just be sad like I will be. I can't really karate chop. Like <laughs> punch. Let's get it under they. Each week, Catherine goes out worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment. We like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And it's. I'm crazy. Okay, this is. De- yeah, we started with some very. Un- this is definitely What the Fuck is Wrong with You? There's no other phrase for this. We look at bad Halloween costumes. In fact, we're going to look at those very soon. 
But those are the ones we look at. Those are the ones that come from a store. They're pre-made. The ones people make for themselves, well, people can be creative with them and interesting with them and topical with them. This is one of those. Um, let's, uh... Does this involve somebody in ill-advised blackface? Oh, you know it does! Of course it does. Every Halloween, there's about 16 assholes who think it's a good idea to paint themselves up like they're black people. This one is kind of worse. Oh, boy. Let's, let's get this over here on the screen. Meet the Florida man who got dressed up as George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin for Halloween. Just, just look at that, kids. Just, just, I am in, I am, I, what the fuck is wrong with you? What is the girl in the middle supposed to be? Um, Robin DeHood is her costume. That's actually one they sell. Yeah, oh, right. Robin DeHood. Blair Ford, a man, decided to celebrate Halloween this year by dressing up as George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin, complete with blackface and blood-stained hoodie. The image of the duo was uploaded. But no Skittles and Arizona iced tea? No, they're not going for the completionist bit, I guess. I, I guess they ran out of money. I mean, if if you're gonna if you're gonna be a raging bag of festering dicks, at least show some fucking devotion and attention to detail. Yeah. Uh, um Greg Semeno, uh, 22, played portrayed Zimmerman, complete with a neighborhood watch T-shirt. Semeno lives in Cape Coral, Florida, where he appears to work for a carpentry firm. William uh, Fellini, 25, dressed up as Martin, covering his face in black paint and donning a gray sweatshirt with a single bullet hole surrounded by fake blood. Fellini, who also lives in Cape Coral, was arrested in June for felony auto theft. His rap sheet also included collars for loitering, and failing to register an automobile. So they're fine, upstanding young gentlemen to begin with. I... I... Here's the thing. The one it thing? Should, it should go without saying uh. by now. Don't paint yourself up in blackface. Like, Merrick said it. I'm wearing about as much black on my face as a white person should this ever, time of year. Ever. No, no, not just this time of year, ever. Yeah, That's... well, obviously, but Halloween, people think they can get away with some shit. No, you cannot get away with some shit just because it's Halloween. No, like Julianne Hoff did Crazy Eyes from Orange is the New Black. You know what? If you just put your hair up in the little twist and wore the orange, people would have gotten it. You didn't need to cover yourself in brown shoe polish. People would have gotten it. They would have been like, oh, you're crazy eyes, except you're a white chick. Whatever. That's cool. Nobody would have been confused. They just would have not thought you were a total asshole. And what's more, they're proud of this is the thing. Well, it's Florida. This is like this is like kids who were proud. They pooped in the potty. No, it's more like the guys last week who were proud. They knocked over a two million year old rock. I and it's, they're proud of doing something terrible. And here's what's going to happen. They put it on Facebook. They thought this is a great idea. They're quickly discovering this was a very bad idea. Now, I bet you anything they're going to go. We didn't mean it. What's wrong? It's just not a bit. It was just a joke. Stop Why people have a sense of humor? And uh, of course, they're they're um, the Internet is forever. Facebook is forever. Facebook makes damn sure they're forever. Try try and cancel your Facebook account. I dare yeah. you. Try that shit. So this is going to follow them. As, uh, okay, now the one guy who's got the car felony apparently doesn't give the shit, obviously. But the other guy, you think his work is going to want to be associated with him at this point? No. Oh. I mean, this isn't really something you can technically fire somebody for. Actually, no, it is. Florida is a right to work state. 
which means oh, okay. they can fire you for any damn reason they please. Because here, like, you can't fire somebody for being an asshole, unfortunately. Like, it'd be nice if you could, but you're a real asshole isn't enough reason to fire people. No, Florida can fire you without cause because that's what right to work means. Which isn't what that should mean, but that's what it means. Yeah, that sounds like the opposite. It of is. What it means. I he- We've always been at war with Eurasia. I hear something in the background on your end. Yeah, I, I, it's an ad autoplay. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Autoplay. The uh, uh, Acura ad. Like I can buy an Acura. It- I mean, the Batgirl mobile is pretty expensive to maintain. Did you do you ever watch the show New Girl? No. They did the Halloween episode, and at some point during the episode, for reasons germane to the plot, Zoe De Chanel winds up in a Batman costume. And uh, the end is a gag with her and her friend where she's saying she's trying to say something about the Batmobile, but she can't say Batmobile. She keeps saying Bat, Bat, Batman mobile. And her friend's like Batmobile, and she's like Batman mobile. Batmobile. Batman mobile and it like it's 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 funny when Zoe Deschanel does it it's not super funny when I do it what? anyway okay <laughs> anyway it's it's this is one of those don't they understand the concept of regret don't they no. This is how do you not get to the next step that this might be a bad idea? How do you live your life? Didn't you were in Florida for the trial? You know, the controversy and shit. Do you think people would just be like, oh, that's right. That's real clever. Yeah, that's it's And also uh, shoe polish. uh, That kid's dead. Yes. That kid was fucking 17 and he's dead. Kudos for your wonderful sensitivity. You are a magnificent human fucking being. Yeah, like you're ridiculing someone Uh, for being dead. With a big old smile on your face. As Marla Singer would put it, you're infectious human waste. Which is also, by the way, having finished Breaking Bad, the best term I can think of to describe Walter White. Eh, this is talk for another time. That'll that that's a talk for another. Time. But so to on to lighter fare. Thank God. Um, did you ever used to do the the haunted houses and stuff with with your parents when you were a kid? Yes, my sister and my friend Jessica and I got kicked out of the haunted house at the Methodist Church because we assaulted the people inside. Not because we were bad kids or anything. Because like, they jumped out and fucked with you. Right. We got scared. And my my sister and I both have this thing where our reaction to fear is to start swinging at it. <laughs> and uh, oh. Nancy punched a guy and I kicked a guy. And uh, I think Jessica, I forget what she did. She like hit a guy or something. And then they, they asked us to leave and please not come back to the Methodist Church haunted house. There, there's another thing they, they do out. In the, it's a Midwest thing. Have you ever heard of corn maze? Oh, yeah, we have those here. Yeah, you have those? OK, well, you, um, that? you know, you'd think that these uh, it would be a fairly straightforward affair. You know, you get in the maze, you find your way out. But um, sometimes you need help. I just never knew someone would need this much help. Family lost in corn maze. Calls 911 for help. Oh. Uh, I'm really scared, is the quote on the story. Um, we I'm so th- excited. I'm so scared. <laughs> we thought this would be fun. Instead, it's a nightmare. I don't know what made us do this. Uh, this is from Massachusetts. Isn't that the last monologue in the Blair Witch Project? Yeah, I'm so sorry. Now, this, this is from Massachusetts, actually. Um, Massachusetts family got the Halloween scare of a lifetime, getting ins- lost inside a dark and creepy Salem area corn maze at call 911 for a rescue. Uh, Davis police say they got the call of distress from a mother of two 
Uh, the woman alerted a 911 operator of their situation on uh, the Connors Farm in Danvers, a short distance from Salem. Voice recording of 911 calls made available to the media on Wednesday. The exchange, woman, hi, I just called. I'm still stuck at Connors Farm. I don't see anybody. I'm really scared. It's really dark. And we've got a three week old baby with us. Just relax, calm down. Your husband is with you, right? Yes, but my baby. Okay, I understand the police officer is on the way. And at three weeks old, are you even supposed to have a baby outdoors for very long? I, I mean, obviously, I have no children, so maybe they're cool by then, but I think they're still pretty susceptible to the elements. I don't think you're supposed to take them out much at that point. This was just ill thought in so like, many they ways. They don't even have a really hard skull by three weeks, as far as I'm aware. I wouldn't take them out into a corn maze. That seems like walking them around a Petri dish. You know, I had to not have, I, I've been, I've gotten lost in those damn mirror mazes at the fair. You know, the ones where you, you tried, oh, this is, this is the way out. Bang, you're right into a piece of glass. I've done that. I would know were I to enter one of these, you know, maybe bringing a baby into this environment would not be the best forethought. Well, I'm, like, what the fuck corn maze was this? <laughs> that they were in there long enough for it to get dark and nobody was working there. Yeah, you think you could be able to scream and someone would and other also right? like there should be always somebody within shouting distance. Here's the other thing. How many hours had to pass where nobody was uh, like, is this the children of the corn maze? <laughs> is this the Twilight Zone? Little Ricky wishes you into the corn maze. What the fuck corn maze is this? You know, with me. I have I have got another uh, way of, of dealing with this. If I got lost in a corn maze, you know what I'd start do what I would do? I would pick a direction and go fuck the corn. Well, I would, yeah, you can kind of. You yes. And I mean, eventually you're going to get you go in a straight line. You're going to wow. find your fucking way out. You're going to cut the fuck out of yourself, though. Yeah, but it's corn. No, corn husks are. They are motherfuckers. I would kick that shit down. Do you remember the um the X the first X Files movie, the good one? Yeah. Not the second piece of shit one that yes. we do not speak of. They're running through that corn field right. yeah. to the pods. There was an interview with Jillian Anderson, and she she said, like, they obviously they had to do 50, 60 takes of that, because that's what they do. And she said that was the worst shot of the whole film. Because you know, they always put her in heels this high because Jillian Anderson is a Lilliputian. And David Duchovny is a human sized person. And so she's like running through a cornfield in five inch stacked heels and getting the crap scratched out of her with corn and getting it thwacking her in the face. And she said it was awful doing that scene. Like that was the worst part of the movie. Yeah, you know, for me, I'm I'm all for the whole equality bit. Sure. But you're there with your wife and your baby. I know I would take it upon myself to go, OK, hon, stay here. I'm going to knock this shit down and we're getting out. I'm going to go fight the corn. I'm going to get, I will knock down a fucking trail of this fucking corn. That's how you know, that's how you know you found yourself a keeper when he's willing to fight the corn. <laughs> oh. so the first thing I, I asked my boyfriend that on the first date, will you fight the corn for me? If not, this is a no go. You got to fight the corn. Um, OK, so obviously it wouldn't be Halloween without uh, cemeteries and graves and dead things and all that. And um, we've got one here that is just, oh, I feel so bad for these people. Have, have, I, you'd go to a funeral home. You trust them to deal with your loved ones respectfully. And more importantly, competently yes these are th so when shit like this happens you're you're well let's just say you're probably not going to go back to them for their services ever graveyard cremates wrong body 
Graveyard in Cologne cremated a woman who was supposed to be buried after it mixed up two bodies. Oh my God. The coffin was reported missing uh, from the graveyard in Cologne on Monday of last week. Investigators speculated the coffin could have been stolen, possibly by a motorcycle gang. This is a thing that happens? How would that even happen? But graveyard officials at first categorically denied the body could have been burnt by mistake until an investigation showed it had. I'm still working on the motorcycle gang stealing a coffin. Like, are they riding side by side, each holding an egg? Because <laughs> coffins are fucking <laughs> This is the weirdest funeral procession in the history. They're large and heavy. Uh, How would anybody on a motorcycle possibly steal a coffin? Yeah, is this the thing that happens a lot in Cologne? That just motorcycle gangs go, well, what are we doing tonight? Well, we are can they, get drunk. Are or- they ant people who can carry 50 times their own body weight on their back? But- How do you, I don't I don't think that's physically possible to steal a coffin on a motorcycle. And I'm sure a, someone in the chat is going to explain to me why it is. Yes, they but always I don't do. believe it. Um, it emerged that a woman's remains had been mislabeled and confused with the body with the other body intended to be cremated. <sighs> don't they double check that shit? You know, but they, I mean, doctors have cut off the wrong leg. OK, I guess it's good that it wasn't a person who was alive. Well, obviously, but still, I mean, shit like this happens. Doctors have cut off the wrong leg. You know, don't tell me there's a sidecar. A sidecar can't hold that weight either. Don't, it's not built for that. Tara, Tara, don't uh, don't argue with the choir pedantic. It just makes them louder. Uh, I just. I mean, that's pretty terrible. Like it's human error. I'm sure it happens. It's horrible. Oh, I and, you know, for me personally, I'm like, if it's my remains, I give a fuck. You burn them, you bury them, you throw them in the the ocean. I give a shit. I'm not there anymore. But I can understand how for a family it would kind of be upsetting because, you know, your loved one had wishes. You'd want them to be. Right. Followed. And if you're having an open casket viewing, well, you're not anymore. No, you're not. Man, grandma got a lot shorter and dustier. I mean, it's horrible. Yeah. I can't, there was a there was a story maybe 10 years ago on Long Island where there was a crematorium that they found out wasn't actually cremating the bodies it got at all. It was giving people like wood ash and yes. literally just dumping all the bodies in the woods behind the place. Was that I thought and that was found, Florida. No, I think it was Long Island. And they found, I think, like 100 bodies in various states of decomposition. It took them forever to identify all the remains and inform the families that, like, just dumped in the woods behind this place. And they were giving people just, you know, wood ash. And I don't know why. I I guess it could be worse. Yeah. Um... Moving along, uh, we've got this story from Chicago Sun Times, um, and again, we are getting quite macabre tonight with the Halloween stuff. I know. Well, you know what would be a, a good classic of uh, of Halloween fair is the the murder mystery and the murder plots, and you know, strangers on a train and stuff like that. That's that's, that's an old classic. But in real life, in the modern day, we've kind of made it stupid. It's from a 19 year old. And yes, guess what? Facebook again. Man 19 logs on to Facebook, shares plot to kill classmate. Now it's been team told a classmate through Facebook last week he'd been planning to kill him for a year and would shoot him at school. Thomas Brash, 19, has been charged with disorderly conduct for threatening his fellow student. He appears in Bond Court Sunday. Um, Assistant State Attorney General Anthony uh, Gasudo said uh, Brash was stopped Im- immediately when he arrived at school the day after the threat was allegedly made, taking the office and searched. School was alerted by several students who saw the threat online. 
did not have a weapon and was searched, but officials did find a phone he had allegedly stolen from a Costco wholesale store. There is everything stupid here. All right. If you're trying to scare someone with a death threat, Mm -hmm. which is a thing that people do, I'm not condoning it. No. There are ways to do this that are legitimately intimidating. Facebook is not one of them. Okay, Eddie Versetti, type M for murder. Oh, sorry. Go on, please. Did you hear that thing someone's putting around on Facebook that LOL actually stands for Lucifer, our Lord? And that it's it's a it's a satanic chant and like the Satanists have tricked the Internet into empowering Satan constantly. This is a thing that's going around. I don't know if it's a joke. I saw the graphic someone posted. I'm assuming it's a joke. Cause, God, yeah. I hope it's a joke. It, it, this, isn't it horrible that at this day and age you can't tell anymore? I know because people really are that stupid. Uh, but you do not put your th- all right. A threat should normally be made in such a way as it's not going to come back on you. Because at least make an anonymous burner Facebook account. Burner Facebook. Because this, I mean, Jesus, there's a there's a paper trail. All right, not actual paper, but it's still. It's not like you can't go, wasn't me. It's on your Facebook, wasn't me. And then, to top it off that day, to bring the stolen phone with you to school. That's the cherry on top there. That's... uh Yeah. And... 19 and still in high school, huh? Wonder why. I mean, it's also a little concerning because. I don't know. The whole bringing your gun to school thing has gotten way too common. And it's, you know, and it's a little concerning that it's common enough. That. This kid didn't stop to think that he shouldn't mention it on Facebook. Yeah, we kind of take that shit seriously now. It's not, you know, do you remember a little thing called 9-11? We started taking all this shit seriously and people got their... Not even 9-11, Columbine. Like, yeah, they take this shit seriously. I don't know whether or not he was joking. If he was, it's not funny. If he wasn't, I mean... Hey, dude. The fact, the fact that you would... It would not occur to you not to say that in public, I think, says something kind of scary about where we're at societally. Hey, dude, uh, tomorrow in school, I'm going to shoot you in the face. Just kidding. Just kidding. Not no. Funny. It no. is not the modern equivalent of passing a note that you're going to beat someone up when the bell rings. It's not the same. I guess it probably I guess it maybe is. The modern equivalent, but that's terrible. That's our show. Like, just pass them a note. They're going to punch him when the bell rings. That's what kids did in our day. Mm -hmm. And it worked out pretty well. (laughs) So our last one tonight, of course, Halloween, we, we have to have wonderful, scary things like the exorcist and the omen and Rosemary's baby, a little elements of Satanism. Well, this is not going to be as popular a tale as those, I don't think, um, from Oklahoma City. Wow. Um, Oklahoma City man burns Bible, destroys apartment because of, quote, high homosexual demon. A bizarre and violent series of events at an Oklahoma City apartment involving Bible burning, blood, and a, quote, homosexual demon and destruction has landed a man behind bars. According to Oklahoma City Police, 22-year-old Jeremy Jarnell Anderson being held at the Oklahoma County Jail Thursday after a violent episode at his apartment. 
Officers said they were called to the Oklahoma City apartment Wednesday and reported a person, quote, going ballistic. Check this shit out. Officers said the caller mentioned a man whose face was bloody, had kicked an apartment door off its hinges, poured salt and soap all over himself, and was breaking glass on other objects. When officers got to the apartment, they said they found Anderson, whose face and hands were covered in blood, screaming random things on the front porch. An officer said Anderson was, quote, clearly out of touch with reality. The ordeal continued. Officers tried to reason with Anderson. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, you kind of have to. You can't go straight to tasing people, but that's it is a fruitless endeavor, it seems. Yeah, they're, they're trying to reason. What were they supposed to say, sir? Yeah, I got nothing. Dave, do we have anything, sir? I. Is the ordeal uh, when that didn't work, they tried to tase him. But Anderson ripped the probes from his skin and yelled the taser wouldn't affect him. Anderson told them to put down their weapons and he would fist fight them. Um, a small fire was burning near the stove, which quickly filled the house with smoke. Officers were finally able to sub subdue Anderson with tasers during a smoke blinded scuffle. Um, moments later, he admitted he needed medication after saying he had done nothing wrong he was just remodeling his house. I don't think well, that's obviously how... obviously the homosexual demon wants his own room. The police report says Anderson said he started the fire in his apartment because he was, quote, cooking the Bible because he was a Satanist. Anderson told officers he met a, quote, possessed homosexual demon who wanted drugs from him and perform sexual acts on him. And here's the best part. He said he wasn't gay, just high. I don't understand any of this. I don't understand a goddamn thing. If you're a Satanist, why are you covering yourself in salt? Salt is the universal purifier. So, like, the reason Sam and Dean salt the, bur the ones before they burn them is to purify them. I know supernatural isn't exactly a super accurate source for religion. But this this is that comes from the idea that salt is the universal purifier. You salt the earth. Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt. It has symbolic value. Not so much to Satan, though. <laughs> I love the picture of this guy. I look at him. He's just like uh... Satan. Not a huge fan of high sodium content. That's God's department. This is without a doubt. Satan's a Mrs. Dash kind of guy. <laughs> this is without a doubt the the prob the, the the longest and most convoluted expression of no homo I have ever read in my life. And why was he burning things? <laughs> I I uh. Oh, and of course, the picture of his apartment's even better. Look at the bottom there. That that's what police showed up to to observe. Uh. I just don't. Mike says, "Does that make garlic salt more holy? Since it will also drive up drive off vampires." It's a twofer. It's a twofer. Yes. When in doubt, garlic salt the bones before you burn them. All right. You'll get them both. That's both both. So. So what have we we learned tonight um, that men who are deeply in the closet will go to any lengths to deny that shit? Dude, it's OK. This is a safe place. Stop dumping salt and soap on yourself and just learn to love you for you and bleach. Bleach poured on the skin alone. <laughs> it's set on fire. Bleach is flammable. <laughs> you can't do, I mean, you can do that, but you really shouldn't. It's going to leave a mark. Oh, oh, oh. We've learned that Facebook is forever yet again. So don't take pictures of yourself, not only in blackface, but in blackface of a murdered teen. What the fuck? 
Maybe, maybe don't mock murder victims. Maybe for don't Halloween. do that. Maybe don't don't do that because you know that don't. That. Here's the thing: little history lesson for you people. Hmm. The reason Halloween comes from Ireland. Hmm. Halloween comes from the Irish. You're welcome. <laughs> it was. It's all Hallow's Eve because November first is All Souls Day. Right. So the belief was that on. Halloween or, it, you know, it was Samhain in the pagan tradition that all the all the souls of the dead would come and walk the earth. And the reason that you wore a costume was you, you wore a mask so that they wouldn't recognize you as as the living and attack you. Right. You wore a mask to protect yourself from the evil souls. So here's the thing. Like. If your Halloween costume is to mock the dead and that shit turns out to be true, you are fucked. Yeah, they're going to be a little bit cranky about that shit. I so believe. even if it's not about even if you're unable to rationalize it by just being a decent fucking human being, just think about self-preservation. Speaking of the dead uh we learned this week that maybe before you burn the body double check that check, shit check the id check, yeah, the, check ID. the fingerprints just just double check because you know measure twice burn once okay how do that i mean how do they verify i never thought about that i because, I mean, if the paperwork gets switched, how do you verify? Do you take fingerprints? Do you take pictures? I never really thought about that. I mean, if someone accidentally switches the files and you, you're not personally acquainted, like both of my parents, we had their funerals at places where the owners were personally acquainted with them. Right. So this would not have been a problem. But if you're not, that seems like it. I, I don't I mean, there's got to be a system in place. They have to be a way that they do that. It, it, Otherwise, this would happen all the time. Maybe it does and it just doesn't get reported. Because they're too embarrassed. Because, you know, who's going to check? I'd like to think not. You'd like to think, but I think if anything, the show has taught us that, you know. Uh, we've We've learned this week that. Maybe, just maybe, your threats should not be recorded as evidence on the internet. Maybe you shouldn't threaten to kill people to begin with. Well, yeah, there is that, too. I mean, if you want to get technical let's, about it. Let's start with the really obvious. Don't kill people. Don't threaten to kill people. Be a decent fucking human being. <laughs> well, that's not going to happen. If you can't manage that, at least don't be a moron. <laughs> that's not going to happen either. Um, and we, we've learned, I think, yeah, importantly this week, we've learned a real man fights the corn. Real man fights the corn. A re, you know, if, if, if you want to prove to a woman you love her, it's not flowers. It's it's not a diamond ring. It's you go out there and you beat the you shit out of You gotta show that corn who's boss. You fuck up some corn, baby. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> I'm serious, man. After like an hour of being stuck in a cord maze, be like, fuck it, I'm leaving. I'll yeah, I mean, it's not like it's a brick wall. No, pick a direction and go. Just start kicking that shit over. It is just corn. That and hey. It's going to scratch like a motherfucker. Protect that three week old. But and hey, on the way out, free corn. So, you know. <laughs> 